All right, so we're back. That's right. The boys are back. Uh, today we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be talking about financial burden. Um, unfortunately, a lot of us we don't get beautiful paychecks every two weeks, every thirty days. Some of us get pretty awful paychecks. Uh, some of us get mediocre paychecks. But we all have this struggle and this drive of wanting to do our passions while we're alive. And we don't have that. We have this blockage, which is a very important blockage. It's financial stability. But I don't know. It still hurts. Yeah, it's, man, it's freaking, it's hard. It's like, uh, I feel like the system sets you up to fail or they just like don't want you to succeed really. So they try to make it hard as possible for people that, you know, are trying to chase their dreams and like get financial freedom doing the things that they love. Hence why they don't really teach you anything about entrepreneurship inside of a high school. And then of course to not. learn about business and you got, yeah, you like to go to college for business. Like some people do, um, and you got to pay a lot of money for that. And yeah, so it's crazy. People are finding themselves that and then, um, graduating from college in debt and then trying to start a business um, yeah that's gonna the, the, just, that's, rough. yeah that's gonna hurt it's gonna sting like a motherfucking bee yeah, but... <laughs> it's just so dumb yeah I freaking like I mean both of us we're both like entrepreneurs like myself here in LA, um, like the past year, I've just been door dashing to get by, but also like working on my photography and then working on my clothing brand. But it's like <clears throat> door dash doesn't provide enough money for that, for me to like fund into like my businesses on top of like paying rent, and like the car payments, insurance, and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. So, Super fun. like, to, yeah, freaking, that's yeah, the freaking whole like this past year has been freaking up and downhill battle. Um, but luckily, California does have like some pretty good resources. Um, there's a company for any entrepreneurs out there that are living in uh, California. It's called the SBDC. Uh, it's a program basically where you get like you get free mentorship and there's um, they do webinars weekly on different things such as like marketing, uh, going over finances and then like HR stuff. So <clears throat> once your business is somewhat thriving and you like want to hire employees, like the type of insurances you need and there's like cool stuff like that. Um, me living in Utah, like there's nothing, there was nothing ever like that where you get like free mentorship and it's cool because they like hold you accountable. My uh, mentor will call me monthly. He'll give me monthly things to do. And he's like, all right, did you do that last month? Uh, Strict. All right. So this is what you need to try this month. Yeah. And it's cool. Cause like, I, I have told him like my, just like situation. He knows that I door dash and that's like not a lot of income. Um, but so like when I do tell him like, yo, I wasn't able to do this because of this, he's not like bashing me like, oh, 
like you're wrong for not doing that he's just like okay all right well you know get it done i want you to do this by this time and like it's just it's just good because it like holds me accountable so that's a good thing to look up if you're in the california area sbdc they're really helpful that's but, awesome it's good to know that you have organizations yeah, that care about the community yes. Mm -hmm. and they've all been like basically where we are just like struggling i have two mentors uh because when i first moved to california i lived in orange county <clears throat> so i started there and then i moved up to la and i still talk to the orange county uh mentor like every month he's cool he actually bought my shirt he just like loves the brand and he's like always telling me like oh i've had so many people comment on how they love your shirt i'm like oh sweet thanks man um but then yeah i have a mentor here in la now too <laughs> and she's like she's cool and she is telling me because we we're like going over my finances the other day and i was like is it all right like this is my first year being in business here I haven't made any money because I'm basically funding everything just to get like equipment and supplies and like I have just different softwares to use so that I can like design my stuff and she's like oh no that's completely fine like your first year you're not going to make any money and like I guess her second year she didn't she didn't start making money until her third year so I it think takes, that's it, also valuable. Yeah, too, it, take, it, it takes a while, though. I mean, think about any business. Um, I mean, I, that's the hardest. That's the hardest part is and that's where the phrase a starving artist comes from. You are starving. You're starving and, until <laughs> you, you make the success. Yeah. yeah. It's true, man. I'm freaking the past week. I've been living off ramen noodles. So I was like, shit, I legit, I'm in that, that mode that like starving artist. this is what that is. And then it was cool just hearing her like say, yeah, I didn't make money. I didn't start making money until my third year. Cause I feel like a lot of people they'll go through like the first maybe six months to a year and like not see any progress and just give up. They're like, oh, this isn't for me. And then just go back to going back into that nine to five, which sucks. But like, it was cool. Cause I just saw a quote the other day. I don't know if Elon Musk actually said it, but he's like, people will work for a company for 40 to 50 years and think nothing of it, but think like working for yourself, working hard for yourself for three to five years is like too risky. And it's like crazy that, I don't know, in my opinion, like you just be willing to give your life away to some like corporate company that don't, that doesn't care about you. like. If, you died tomorrow, they'll replace you. But that's the dream. Rather than like but taking that's the dream. <laughs> Isn't yeah. it? I mean it is that's, yeah, that's the fault. I mean this is what America was <sighs> You know, I, I think of I think of America I think of corporate America is more as a, a stigma where it's a re representation of don't worry. They're there. Here's money. So you be machines for us. I mean, it literally is you are a machine. You're a, a component, a, a computer chip of their master plan, which is to make money. Uh, th there's no there's no positivity that comes out of it. Unfortunately, I'm in that situation right now where I'm trying to go to nail school. Um, I'm trying to work on my art. I'm trying to work on this. And I have this nine to five job. And 
it pays my bills just enough. You know, I'm I'm driving there an hour each way, and I'm dealing with elderly people for eight hours on a phone, doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And it's very, very hard. It's very, very hard mentally and physically. And um, I just got to wait until everything kind of fits into place. And it's sometimes it's really painful because I say to myself, I'm like, I've escaped a cult. I've escaped the shackles of my sexuality. I've opened myself up to listen and be there for others. And I've opened up myself to the open-mindedness and thinking and ideology and all of it. And all I come back to say is, why me? You know, I, I've accomplished so much. And you say, why me? Why? I, I don't think there really is an answer. But... We're... I was just thinking about this today. Where would the Velvet Underground be if they never met Andy Warhol? Wow. Yeah. Blew my mind. Damn, that's cool. That just said that too. I just saw a quote from Andy Warhol. Uh, God bless his soul. The other day too, or it was like I think it was yesterday. <laughs> I was like, man, um, I saved it on my phone because it was pretty cool. Um, mm. It is. Don't think about making art. Get it done. Let everyone else decide if it's good or bad, whether they love it or hate it, while they are deciding make even more art. And I was like, you know, that's cool. Because I feel like as an artist, sometimes it's hard to put yourself out there because you're just like, I don't know, the judgment against like critics. Everyone wants to be a critic of artwork and like they'll decide if it's good or bad, but I saw that and um, yeah, I was just like, man, yeah, I just got to keep going with my like photography and clothing, regardless of what people think. Like I just got to keep creating, you know, sometimes it'll, I think for the most part, anything you make is good. It's like coming from the heart. Or, uh, it depends. Yeah, there, there are th some things I make, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, Lord, what have I done? What have I done? Yeah, I've been there. Done that. <laughs> fuck that. Woo! Yeah. Definitely fuck that. Yeah. So, yeah, it depends, but I don't know. I Sometimes, I don't know. I feel like you got to make bad art to make good art. Like, when you're first starting out with anything it's not going to be as good and then the more you do it the better you get but to the point it's like second nature but it's like a bond yeah going back to like you were just talking about it, yeah it's freaking it's super hard like it is hard I, hard to do any of this stuff like to be an entrepreneur and then work another job on top of it like i was questioning like all last week questioning myself like man do i really want to keep doing this do i really want to keep doing this because i i literally work seven days a week um i've been working seven days a week and <clears throat> i'll literally like i'll <laughs> go and door dash in the mornings uh and like do that up until like maybe 6 30 and then um i'll get back to my place uh and we have like the studio here and i just been trying to like freshen it up clean it up because we're gonna want to start renting it out soon to like other photographers um we just had a company 
inquire about it the other day. It's a nonprofit from uh, London. They want to shoot. Uh, so basically we're renovating the studio and like we have a photo gallery here in two weeks too. And so I just been, <clears throat> as soon as I get off work from door dashing, I'll come here and like start doing stuff for the studio. And, uh, you know, I'm like grateful for it, but at the same time I get so anxious cause I'm like, man, I work so hard and at times I feel like I'm not getting anywhere. And then I haven't, like I do stuff for my clothing, but I haven't done like what I want to do. Like I'm learning about fabrics and stuff and cutting patterns. Um, so I've just been like wanting to get a sewing machine and like, a, like I need to get threads and a bunch of stuff like that. But it's just like, yeah, such a process and getting everything else going and set up. I'm just like, man, I don't have time or the money to put into it. Cause I feel like every time I like make the money to like do something like something comes up like my actually my car just broke down uh luckily it's like nothing super bad it's just i just need to get a battery and so i'm gonna have that replaced this week but yeah it's freaking rough man because i have to work at least like 45 50 hours a week just to keep up with the cost of living in California. So, like, I'll let, I'll, dude, how can I beat this? I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, I make over $3,000 a month. And it sounds like a lot of money, right? It's not. My rent is $1,200. My internet is 100 my health coverage is about $108. My phone bill is $45. And it just keeps on adding up. And it, it, the, the craziest part, you, you get to a point where you're not controlling how much you make. Your job is, mm -hmm. is choosing how much you make. So the whole idiocracy about this is, is that unless you level up, how do you level up? Let's see, you go to a college, this is fascinating. You take a bunch of classes that have nothing to do with your degree. And then you spend four years, and then you get this beautiful piece of paper. It's beautiful, it costs you $56,000. It's beautiful, it's amazing. And you can hang it up in the wall. And then you go out to the real world. And you're only making $60,000 a year. And you have a $50,000 loan. So by the time you turn 63, you're going to still be paying off your student loans. Isn't that nice? It's wonderful. I'm being sarcastic for, you know, jokes or reasons. But point, <laughs> point, point made. That is the life that you choose if you go down that path. That is the reality that you face. Yep. That's why I'm glad I dropped out of college when I did, because I could be in a lot more debt than what I am. Luckily, I only owe like $3,000. So I think it was smart. And I think the only reason I went to college was because that's what my parents wanted. I think we spoke about that previously, but yeah, I'm glad I dropped out when I did. Um, as far as leveling up, I think you just got to get creative with it uh, and just learn 
about different ways. You know, they say knowledge is power. And so I'm always like trying to learn different ways I can create income on things that I'm interested in. So like, it's powerful. Just that we have the photography studio. Yeah. That we got the photography studio. I love photography. So regardless of if someone else is using it or not, I'm still going to use it because then like I I'm somewhat starting now like I'm shooting models and I'm going to start like my plan is to start setting up ads for people that are looking for portraits and stuff so I can book clients uh, that way for um, yeah for another stream of income you, you but know then what, you know what you should like, do I'll tell you something I've been seeing this all over um all over the internet you walk up to a random person you have a camera and you just say, Hey, uh, yeah. Hey, can I, you know, I love your outfit or something. I'm a photographer. Do you mind if I take your picture? And I'll be sure to send them to you, you know, just whatever. Some of those people will be like, no, no, no. But some people are like, okay, sure. And you take the picture and they look, they're like, Oh my God, that's amazing. Send them to me. And then you send them over to them. And then, you know, yeah. you're connected on Instagram and now you're able to get they're pick like they're gonna have friends and people they're gonna show this picture to, and you're able to create this experience. Again, excellent point. Isn't that what creativity is? Is where yeah. you are able to pass it on to somebody else, and they're able to pass it on to other people, um, which is what we're doing right now. Whoa! Yeah. A for effort. That is a great idea. And I'm in the perfect spot for that. Yes. To do that. Um, yeah, the more the more I get free time, the more I will start doing stuff like that, which it's weird enough. I feel like I am going to start getting free time. I can feel myself transitioning from this DoorDash to like, being able to do more photography and more clothing stuff like i just did a photo shoot saturday and it was freaking so good like the photos turned out so dope like the model loves them uh george he's the one that has the the other brand and he he's just like oh these are so good and then we have more uh models i like the past month i've i've interviewed like 20 something models like i think 24 um and we had just had you them know, in here for a meeting the you, know other be, day. you know what would be a genius idea i was just thinking of this why don't we bring them on the podcast we could yeah i i really think I'm sure some would be down because because hmm? yeah, a lot of people go through this. I said I feel like that's a great idea. A lot of people go through the same thing here in LA. Mm -hmm. And we get like a real perspective. Again, like the whole idea is, and this really ties it. And I'm going to bring this into what is lost in the groove. Okay, uh, the idea for you know the 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 ideology. Okay, our our our, our cult. Okay. The Lost in the Groove cult. Hail Satan. Anyway, uh, what it's about is bringing real people. For example, Henry. Henry and I are, are the, the literal example of what it is to live in America. And there are many times where people try to speak on our behalf. Right? Many times in the media. They don't go through what we do. To survive they don't do what we need to be as artists you know as Andy Warhol put it very well in the 1970s we were put in the box because we were told to be there that's how artists became what we are we deserve our freedom and we're getting that now with all the social media and the internet we finally have our freedom but it's how we're gonna use it is going to be the way that we power it. Yeah. 
I agree. And break up out of the boxes. I've been thinking about that. And I've pretty much been breaking out of every box anyone tries to put me in because I'm not built for that. And I can't live like that. And I think that's the whole point of this. It's like we break ourselves out of the box to help others to do the same. Because I don't know. I just feel like people don't feel like there's a chance um, until they see someone else do it. Yeah, no and willpower. So, yeah, shit. And I feel like if any, like if we can do it, anyone can do it. Fuck yeah. Like I freaking yeah. It's been amazing getting this this far because I I don't know. I'm the type of person I'm super hard on myself and I like I look at things that I've done, but I still don't think it's enough, even though I feel like like I I have done a lot of things and people are just like, dang, Henry, like, wow, I'm so like proud of you. You're doing amazing and stuff. Um, And yeah, it's it's been good, but I still like feel like I can do more and want to do more with my life but it's just like thinking reflecting on my life or where i come from and stuff like being like poor and whatnot like being homeless uh shoot, i just try and encourage people like if i can do this you can do this it's and yeah it is super hard but like i think what's somewhat making this easier for me now is that like i have people to do it with with george having his clothing brand like we bounce each other ideas off of each other we're like clothing and then the models coming in and they're wearing it um i have a few photographer friends that i'm like trying to bring into this because i'm sure there's like 24 models i'm not trying to like shoot all 24 of them i want <laughs> other photographers to do this too because it just helps them grow as photographers and people and helps their portfolio I th and i don't know i think with the whole pandemic and like people being locked up it just made people like want to isolate i feel like for myself i isolate a lot but it's like good to like have a community and just like support system come together and just all create which is basically my like brand man it's just like hippie culture bringing people from all sorts of different backgrounds together <clears throat> um, to create something that's beautiful and equal for everybody so um yeah i'm excited like i haven't done any clothing stuff but um that sbdc that i brought up if you earlier, um, like uh, i just took a court if you want me to um i have some leftover clothing um if you want me to send you anything over i'd be more than happy to um uh, we, we can yeah I, we, we can we can talk about this later but um I mean, I think it's amazing. I think it's really incredible to remember what I said about remember what I said about community. Community is can happen anywhere. Uh, you know, it can happen in a tattoo shop. It could happen in a studio. It could happen in a bakery. It could happen anywhere. Individuals make communities. Communities do not make individuals. Mm hmm. That's deep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah for sure like yeah if you send some stuff over i can get some models in there um and then yeah like i was saying about the sbdc they have like a course they do every year uh it's like a three to four weeks course and they go over just different aspects of business 
Um, but like once you complete that, uh, you're allowed to apply for this grant. Um, and it's like $5,000 if you just do stuff online. But if you actually open up a store, they'll give you 10,000. Uh, and you just can't like make over a million a year or something like that. But I just finished that course and I like have everything that's required in the criteria. So you have to like have an articles of organization from the secretary of state of California, open a business account with your name on it, business plan, and then what you like plan to do with the money and then like your financial projections and how much you've spent already. And so I've, yeah, I've gotten all that done. I'm submitting it tomorrow. Yeah, excited. I'm excited because if I get that five grand, I can buy like all the equipment that I need, and all the supplies, and then I basically want to hit this so hard, like I'm not door dashing anymore. Like I'm grateful that it's like made me money, but I feel like I'm wasting. Yeah, I'm wasting my life away. And I'm not doing what I want to do or like, I don't know, just my business has been stagnant and I would just want to get it growing. And then I could also help other people like grow. And stuff. So, yeah, everything's falling into place. It's just freaking time. It's all about, it's all about perspective. It's all about, you know, what you envision and, and a good friend of mine today said, you know, it, it's, it's not permanent. It's temporary. We all have these stepping stones to get us to the next place. And my belief, this is for me, I believe that I will be a successful podcaster. I believe I will be a successful nail artist. And I believe one day I'll be able to continue my art and make money off of it. That's what I have to believe to survive. And I don't know about you, but those are my amb ambitions. And I feel like every single person should have those. Because how else are you supposed to be successful? Yeah. No, I agree. I, like, I believe in the same thing, like, I believe my clothing business is going to just boom, go off, and it's going to help a lot of people. I believe, like, my, my photography, I'll just be able to, like, continue capturing, like, just beautiful people and just meeting people in that way and sense and then traveling and just seeing different places. Uh, it's like if I didn't believe any of this stuff, I wouldn't be here. Like I'd probably be doing something else. But uh, yeah, I literally was just thinking to myself the other day because I was just saying like, damn, this is hard. Like to the point, some days I'm like, shit, do I want to keep doing this? And then I think like if I didn't do this, what would I be doing? And it's like I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing. And I'm definitely not going back to like the corporate world and just being stuck in that working for someone else for 40, 50 years, watching my life like waste. If you think um, about, if you yeah, think man. about, think about this, if you think about successful people, many successful people came from nothing and became who they are uh you know I, I i love this i you know i love this 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 philanthropy this this bullshit my ass that comes out of the woke movement which is why don't we like take the rich people yeah we'll take their money and split it equally with the people and i say to myself 
It sounds genius on paper. But in reality, you know how many of those people... You know what? A lot of them... Okay, you know what? Okay, a good portion of them, they don't deserve their money. All right. Okay. I hear your point. But then you have those portions of the people that they work their fucking assholes. They're the ones eating the ramen every single day. You know, they were the ones that are, you know, working the corporate jobs. They built themselves up to get where they are. Why do you deserve their money? They worked hard for it. So you just take away what they worked so hard for? Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing people don't get. I think they don't actually, like, see the effort and, like, what the people went through uh, to, like, get the success that they have. They just, like, see a successful person <laughs> being successful one day and they're like, oh, screw him, he's rich. And... I don't know. They just hate. I don't understand that. I do know, like, there are some people that just, like, inherit money from rich families that don't have to work for it. We're not talking about those rich people. We're talking about people that actually freaking work multiple jobs and freaking are up grinding more than they sleep and Stuff like that. There are the... There are those lines, right? You you, you have those... Okay, I'm going to get a little political right now because I'm feeling frisky. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris, okay, is this great example of someone, if she doesn't have the help, she's fucking awful. I mean... A chicken that's fucking laying an egg would be better than that shit. And I mean that sincerely. What I'm trying to point it out is your individuality, your personal creativity, and your personal knowledge, that makes you a person. If you don't have any of those things and you need to rely on others for those aspects of your life and they're not there, you cannot be a functional person. So th the lesson of the day is the only person that's in your way for you to be successful, the only person that can stop you from not being who you want to be is yourself. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but her, I don't even know, man. Politics are so shady. Like, like Slim Shady. Yeah. I feel like their whole thing for that was they just wanted Trump out of the office. So, and we all saw what happened with the whole George Floyd thing. So the Democrats are like, huh, how do we get more votes? Oh, let's throw this lady, African American lady, because, you know, women's rights is pretty big in America too right now uh, it's like let's throw this african american lady in the office that'll get their votes <laughs> and it well, certainly it worked but, but I, I i mean she's I'm, I'm sorry to say this she's an awful human being on yeah. all levels I, 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 i'd agree and now, yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Politics are super shady. I think now. Slim yeah. Shady. It's <laughs> Slim Shady, man. Come on, Eminem and Snoop Dogg, man, this year. Shady. It's crazy. I think, yeah, now they're in trouble because people see how bad that they're just doing things. They want Trump back. I was on TikTok, and I hardly ever get on TikTok. I was on TikTok, and they had this, like, little cartoon uh, going where it was Donald Trump and Biden fighting each other. Oh, no. And anytime someone, like, gives a coin to one of the, one of the presidents, 
the president that got the coin, they punched the other one. And I was looking at it and Donald Trump was up by like 2000 coins <laughs> and they were still going, just punching, punching the shit out of Biden. I was like, Oh snap. So up, uh, yeah, the government better hope they can find something on Trump to get him put behind bars because if they don't and he runs for president again, he's going to win. I mean, I, I do a terrible Donald Trump impression, but be like, sir, sir, sit down. You, <laughs> you over there, sit down. No, I'm not talking to you. No, you, no, I'm... You know, I mean, I it's so stereotypical. I do terrible Donald Trump impression. I'm sorry for anyone that had to hear that. But it's so <sighs> awful because our system is the is is dumber than crap. Okay? It's dumber than crap. For example, for me, I am a conservative. I'm a libertarian. I am conservative. But I I do come from a left wing thinking. I do have, you know, a liberal, a leftist thinking when it comes to a lot of things. Yeah. Um. So, I cannot vote Democrat nor Republican because I don't agree with neither. I am both. You know, there, there, there we, we don't have a res representation of a leader. That represents all of us, you know, because you've got the independent party and none of these parties can run and actually win. It's, you know, I think one of us came close. I had a, I don't know. I was thinking like, what if they're working together to like kind of disrupt our country and making it seem like they're against one another? Because I feel like, I don't know. They what all are you live entailing? Pretty the government just fucking with us to keep us all disengaged and thinking that, oh, it's the Democrats versus the Republicans. But behind the, you know, the media and stuff, when the cameras are off, they're all like throwing parties and shit together and like, they, oh, how can we fuck with our, <laughs> our country more to just like throw them off? To keep them like segregated and hating against one another while we continue to live comfortably because they're all like i feel like they're all living good they all make more money than any of us like just to sit and make laws like, bullshit if, laws. if they really if they really cared about like us as people like the citizens they'd be working together to like figure out what's best for the country and the people, but they don't do that. They do what's best for them. And so, I just, yeah, I feel like they just be working together like silently to make it seem like they're against one another, but they're working together to just like keep the country divided. But I don't know, that's just a conspiracy. I mean, one of the biggest, I think one of the biggest problems we have, which kind of died off in the last generation, was this belief that this country was a superpower. Um, if you look throughout history, you know, the assassination of John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, and then you had... Who knows? Yeah. They might assassinate Donald Trump. I, you know, I mean, even think about today. I mean, today's nine eleven. You know, the uh, World Trade Center. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that is today. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm gonna put that in here because you know, um, but we've had all of these events and and. People have started to realize, oh my God, all of this could have been avoided. All of this. I mean, three three almost close to three thousand people did not need to die today. That, that whole scenario could have it been avoided. I mean, hello. They come into an airport with razor blades. 
What stupid security guard is going to let somebody through? I don't care it's the early 2000s. I don't think any rational security guard that finds razor blades in a bag is going to let somebody on a plane. That show was planned. <laughs> like, it's so planned. The, the whole thing makes no sense. It's like they had so many opportunities. The U.S. government had so many opportunities to stop those people. The guy who owned the building, like, put an insurance policy on the building a little before it actually happened. Like, it doesn't make any sense. He knew it was happening. They, yeah, that shit was planned. Damn. People are going to think we're conspir conspiracy <laughs> theorists, but we're, we're not. We're just, you know, um, just believers of something. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We're talking about financial hardships and stuff. Think about it. Like, the government could raise the minimum wage. I feel like the price of everything is going up besides the price of people's earnings. Housing, the price of food, gas. Like, they could at least raise the minimum wage they won't um, but they haven't and they won't you know why it's like because it doesn't benefit them they don't like you, you said this earlier they they make way more money than we do and i want to clarify something with with everyone here a politician that makes millions and a rock star that makes millions they're not the same type of millionaires. You know, a lot of these rock stars, they came from nothing. These are people that literally built themselves from the ground up, and they got to where they got. The politician is different. This is a person that has gone to Harvard, you know, has this fancy degree and like, this bullshit and that bullshit and all this crap. They live in a completely different realm than we live in. Their realm revolves around money, 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 money. They don't hear people. They hear money. We're in pain. Money. We're dying. Ooh, money. Let's make more funeral homes. Let's get those graves. Seriously. It's all about money. That's the difference. That's the difference between a politician and a rock star. They're both millionaires. But one lives in, a, in the other realm, and the other one lives in our realm. It's kind of fascinating. Damn, I wish I had wine right now. Me too. Shit. I've actually, I haven't been on a sober train, but usually i like i haven't been smoking or drinking as much as i used to i think it's just because i'm in like super focus mode like if i do drink or smoke it's socially it's at a party but like before i used to smoke every day every day <laughs> every day but i kind of like I, I don't operate the same when i'm high and when i'm sober like I can get so much shit done in a, like a few hours when I'm sober, but if I'm high, it'll literally take me the whole day to do that. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, dude. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it took me 13 hours to make the desk. I was high the whole day, 13 hours. <laughs> I spent 13 hours making a desk. God damn. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Okay, like, this could that's have been done in, like, six hours. It took me 13. 30 minutes. <laughs> no, dude, I, like, had to paint it and prime it and sand it. Oh, uh, okay. You you went to town on that thing. And I thought it was just, like, something you picked up at a store, and it's, like, Ikea put it together. I don't know. Dude, dude, I made this. Damn, that's tight. With, with my hands. These that's pretty hands. Cool. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of dope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
but yeah no this this month because i think it's just like the past few months uh but i think this month i've actually been you know slowing down and like just trying to have fun because i told i've been working seven days a week so anytime someone's like yo we're having a kickback in our place come over i'm like fuck yeah i'll be there <laughs> but yeah, because you got to balance out life and fun. You can't just go the whole life, you know, working your life away. But I also do miss my family and friends back home in Utah. So I try to work my ass off because I was telling this to, we had like a meeting yesterday. I feel like anytime I go back home, I kind of backtrack where I am in L.A., and so I feel like I'm like, yeah, I'll go home, which is good because I do like, it's good being around my like, family and friends. And I stuff. love the sirens, by the way. I have to point this out. Yeah, freaking LA, bro. It's always sirens here in all times of the day and night. Fucking crazy. Someone just got shot. I think it was like two or three people got shot three or four blocks away from where I, I live. That's nice. This week, <laughs> I was like driving. I was driving to the gym, and I'm like, "Oh shit!" There's like yellow tapes up around there. I wonder what happened. And I get to the gym, and I'm working out, and they're on the news. Yeah, three to four people just got shot this morning. The killer still on the run. I'm like, "What the fuck?" That's L.A. though. Literally, Sounds that's awesome. One part of LA. There's an app called Citizens App where it'll show you like all the criminal activity going on around whatever area you're in. I got it for one day. This is when I was living in Hollywood. I'm in downtown LA now, but I had it for like not even a full day, maybe a couple of hours. I woke up one morning and someone had crashed their car into a a store two people had robbed liquor stores at knife and gunpoint some other person like robbed someone in like west hollywood it's just so much criminal activity out here damn sounds like new york new york 1970s it's crazy um i don't know if i ever told you this story my dad, he once was, this was uh, 1975, um, he was taking the subway and he wanted to use the, the public bathroom. And he went to use, um, he went to use the door and he noticed that it was, was ajar just a little bit and he peeked in. And there was a guy in there holding a knife. My dad ran. Smart man. If he would have opened that door. Mm. You know, we learned from this, Henry. Don't open the door. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be out. Yeah, I'd be bouncing. Yeah, I kind of get a gun because it is crazy out here. I hope I wouldn't have to use it, but I don't want to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and need it and not have it. It's pretty hard to get a gun in, in California. I've heard that too. So. They're so against gun laws, but uh yeah someone just shared a story it's a guy I play flag football with uh his friend it happened in july his friend uh was like with his family and some other friends they were just enjoying a family barbecue and someone came and just shot up their place and they killed one guy and shot the other dude in the head the bullet went through his head, hit his eye, and he was blind in one eye. But he lived. 
and he woke up and shot the dude and killed like the gunman while he was going or like trying to get his second gun out and like saved his family and the rest of his friends. It was crazy. Damn. But the media didn't cover it. <laughs> the media didn't say anything about it. And they think it's just cause they don't, I don't know, you know, they're trying to ban guns. I think, I don't know. I don't want to get into my personal opinion about guns. I mean, I have a very, very, very uh, personal opinion with guns, which is simple. I believe in guns. I support guns. It's very simple. You have a right to protect yourself. There's rules. You follow the rules. You do what you need to, and that's that. If somebody is trespassing and you tell them, leave my property, and they don't leave your property, and they come closer and closer. And if I pull that trigger, and that person is dead, I am not responsible. I gave them three warnings, and they still came onto my property. How are we supposed to protect ourselves? With sticks? That's a great idea. Let's poke each other to death. That'll work. Smart. No. Okay, pepper spray. Sometimes... <sighs> that may be an option. Sometimes it's not an option. Sometimes your only option is, is a pistol. And it's hot. Good looking. Da -na 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 -na. Sorry. No, you're good. No, I feel you. That's what I was thinking. And they should, like, before they sell people guns, like, look into their freaking, their history and maybe their family's history because, I don't know. I don't want to be looking at my history. <laughs> my my history be nasty. I just, yeah, I don't know. I just think they give, some people just give guns to anyone. No. That's not good. Even to police officers. Isn't that that's, crazy? That's true. Oof. Well, I think we should um we should start wrapping up. Um Damn, I mean this is I feel like this has been a bit heavy. Bit solace. Pretty cool actually. You know, I'm I'm kind of feeling feeling the vibe. And uh I think more importantly is I think we all struggle. I think some of us struggle more differently than others. But in the end of the day, we're just trying to get to our final destination. That will take a very long time to get, but you've just taken the right ride. That's true. Um, I would say it's just more so it's about the journey not the destination as cliche as that sounds but yeah if you're going through financial hardships just like everyone else in this freaking country um <clears throat> i would say just keep going you know you don't want to stop in hell there what's that there's a quote where it's just like why would you just like stop in hell or something like that like, oh well i know uh I, I know a pretty i know a pretty jewish variation of that quote yeah. it's very jewish what is it it's if you land in hell your only way is to beg your bubby that you really liked her <laughs> 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 Kugel is potato cake. You you probably heard of it before, but I, 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 to, I told you it was a very Jewish. Yeah, that sounds Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. If you're going through like hard stuff, just yeah, keep going. I swear, there's better tomorrows. It's just like everything's temporary. And shoot, something I'm learning, which I've had a hard time with, just due to freaking like growing up is just, I guess, reaching out to people. 
um, to struggle with because I feel like everyone's struggling in some way and can relate. So just like try and reach out to someone for help. It doesn't necessarily always have to be monetary. It's just like venting about your issues and whatnot. Finding Amen. those, finding those who listen. Yeah. Wow. Well, this has been fun. This has been great, and uh, we got lost in the groove. So, uh, we'll see you guys next week. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully. Anyway, who knows? I'm going to go to sleep now. Love you, people. Bye.